Hey everybody, what's up? Chuck here, PowerAxe.com. What you are looking at here is the uh, my front drive shaft, universal joint going into the diff, the front differential. Why are you looking at this? Well, I've been feeling a lot of vibration in the front of this thing lately, and so I got in here. I'm poking and prodding and this and that, and grabbed hold of this drive shaft. And what did I find? Watch real close. You get up here, you see it. See the movement? Bring you joint shot. So, obviously, I guess you figured out the feature for this video. We're changing a set of universal joints. I'm going to change both ends. And so, as part of the tutorial, I'm going to walk you guys through how it's done. Let me get this thing off. How does that happen? See these straps right here? They hold the U joint cups in place into the yoke here. These bolts here. I gotta come off. Yes. Straps, bolts each side, and the other end of the drive shaft the same way. The other end of the drive shaft where it goes into the uh, transfer case. So, basically, let me get these things off here and I'll be right back with you. And just to give you a quick shot of how what I'm using, that right there, what you see is a 5 16 six point socket. Of course, it's a quarter inch drive socket. I've got it adapted with a 3 8 adapter going onto my ratchet. And so, anyway, long story short, gotta get these bolts out. So, I just wanted to show you real quick that is a 5 16 So, if you need to know what tools to keep in your little toolbox in case you're out on the trail and you need to do a road, uh, trail side fix because you snap a U joint for mudding or you're rock crawling or whatever your case may be, that's one of the tools you need to have in. Right, let me get this thing off. Can't hold the phone. Can't have phone. Listen to me. Can't hold the camera and the ratchet at the same time. Now the back end of the drive shaft, part of the, the joins the uh, transfer case. Way back underneath the skid plate. Here's the skid plate. There's the drive shaft. You got four bolts right there. Same size as the front. The five sixteenths. You need to get them out. If you'd like the transfer case in. With the uh, with the Jeep and gear, it pretty much holds the drive shaft in place for you. At this current time, I have the shifter knob and all kinds of crap off my shifter up right at the moment, so I'm just taking a pipe wrench, locking it onto my drive shaft, and so I break them loose. And once you break them loose, they come out pretty easy. So, all right, see you in just a moment. I started to pop this drive shaft out, and I thought of something. I want to show you guys a quick trick. See how I've got that screwdriver wedged in behind the U-joint on the pinion side of the uh, U-joint? Sometimes when you, these things have been in there for a while, they, you can't just, not all the time can you shake your hand, shake the drive shaft and pop it out and you're good to go. Sometimes they're stuck in there pretty good. So I just wedged your screwdriver on the back side, on the pinion side of the um, U-joint, push back on it, push toward the front of the vehicle. And they'll wedge a uh, wedge a U joint right out for you. Do that at both ends, and make sure you have all that drive shaft because you push it a little bit. Sometimes you'll have to work them out. Sometimes they'll fall out. It just depends on the mood of the part at the time, I guess. But if it falls out and you ain't ready for it, <laughs> you're in for a headache. So let me get it out. Look here, got it out, and you see right there. Caps are gone. Of course, they fall off whenever I took the shaft out. But if you look inside the U joint, smooth. There are, and for the people who's never done this before, there's supposed to be needle bearings inside there. Obviously, gone. And inside here, you can kind of see some of the bearings left in there. There's supposed to be a set of needle bearings all the way around each cap. And obviously, well, this one's just uh, junk. So. I'm going to set up to push this U-joint out, and what I'm going to do is, i tell you what, let's imagine we're trail side, we're out four-wheeling, I've got a 12-ton press in there, I can do this with no problem at all, but I'm going to do it old school way, we're out on the trail, we break a U-joint, we got to change it on the trail, this is how I'm going to show you guys how to do it, just in case you need to. Now, as I go through the process of, you know, knocking the U-joint out and all this kind of jazz, I'll point out that if you've got a press, this is a good time for the press, and you no. Know, little pointers along the way so okay let me go get my other goodies and I'll show you how to knock this baby out of here 
All right, first thing we gotta do, see these little keys right here? I'm gonna turn around so you get a better view of it. Those little snap rings right there, they recess up inside of a groove in the pinion here, up into the yoke, I mean. See where I'm hanging the screwdriver on it? There's a recessed groove up inside there. That snap ring snaps us inside that groove and keeps the U joint in place, centered, and doesn't allow it to come out or move or anything. Even though they are pretty tight press fit, these U joints and the yokes and the pinions and all stuff, they're under a lot of pressure, under a lot of stress a lot of the time. So, just for safety precautions, this type right here takes an outside snap ring. And some of your other uh, vehicles take a snap ring that goes to the inside. So, you gotta get that thing out of there. What you gotta do sometimes, they get a little bit stubborn because of all the rust and crud and such. You take your screwdriver, put it on the edge like that, take you tap it with a hammer it breaks them loose sometimes you can just give them a love tap sometimes you gotta smack the out of them so see how this one cooperates and I just kinda showed you that for demonstration purposes sometimes you don't have to go through all that craziness but sometimes you just gotta beat the sh stuff out of them yeah that's it alright look at this see this right here is gonna be cooperative you squeeze it see how I've got that Squeeze it down like a tear, and it comes right out of that recessed groove. And you flip it, do the other one. See if I get that lucky with this one. Sorry about all the shadows. I'm working outside. Yeah, I got to smack this one. It's gonna be a little cranky. So again, screw it over on the back side right there. Well, guess what? I got lucky and knocked that one completely out, but along the process of that, it threw a whole bunch of junk and rust and everything straight into my face and in my eye. So, anyway, that's out. And so next thing we gotta do, we gotta beat that sucker out of there. But, I am noticing my camera, the battery's getting low, so I'm gonna run and swap, get another set of batteries, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Hey everybody, I'm gonna I'm inserting this right here kind of in the middle of the rest of the video. I was, I was taking the other U joint out and changing it, and something happened. I want to point out to you guys this snap ring. Whenever I was trying to, I showed you guys how it got stuck, and you want to take and tap it with a screwdriver and I'll hook it and tap it out. What you're not seeing here is that this uh, snap ring broke. There's a piece of it stuck right there. Here's how you get around that. The other side here, which I've already done, and you see because the snap ring's not there, I took the snap ring out. And luckily that one right there cooperated, otherwise it really would have been a pain in the ass. Uh, so I took that snap ring out, flip the drive shaft back over, take your extension or socket, whatever, smack the crap out of it, drive that thing down some. Then once you do, most of the time you can take a key take your screwdriver and get in behind it or take that snap ring I'm sorry I keep calling it key take that snap ring hang your screwdriver on the edge of it tap it with a hammer it'll pop right out now this one here already came out I've already you know like I said I've already done all this now, I cannot drive this through because this is the wrong side to drive through remember what I told you a few moments ago about the grease fitting there's the grease fitting so I cannot drive it up this way because the grease fitting will bottom out here and I won't be able to get the cap off so I want to drive it down that way anyway on with the rest of the video. I'm inserting this in the middle of where I showed you how to take the snap rings out. Alright everyone, you seen the last shot where I knocked that clip out and crap blew up everywhere, but anyway, that's side the point. When inside, I got some more batteries for the camera. That's the old cap I showed you a moment ago. Now, one way you usually get this out, I can't imagine we're trail side. This is a one in the uh, inch and sixteenth socket. Notice how the cap We'll go inside of it. So you want at least a socket big enough for your U joint cap to go inside of. Because what's going to happen? We're going to put this under here like that. And change the camera angle a little bit on you. Then 
I'm using an extension. What I'll do is I'll take the back side of this extension, set it on top of that, just smack it with a hammer and drive a huge one out of it. Change the camera a little bit for you. Okay, if you look real close, if you look at the top, see, sinking. Put the back side, see, coming out. So basically, what you do is you keep driving that baby out of there until that cap's out. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna drive it out to the point to the next step, then I'll show you what to do next. Alright everybody, I just want to point something out. I made a total idiotic mistake and I just want to show you what I did. I wasn't paying attention whenever I started driving the U-joint out. It got to a certain point point. I thought, okay fine, I can start pulling the cap off now. And then I realized I couldn't pull the cap out. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a moment. And the reason for that is, if you look right here, the screwdriver sitting, that's the grease fitting. You put your grease gun on it, you pump a little bit, a couple shots of grease in, it greases all the bearings inside the trinian and all that stuff. If you drive your U-joint this way out of the into the yoke to get that cap off, you can't because that particular U, uh, that grease fitting right there. Not all U-joints have the grease fitting there. Some of them have them on the end of the trim. It's like the one I'm putting in. They're inside the end of the caps. I use Moog, uh, the high dollar Moog U-joints. I don't like breakage, so I'm putting in good ones. But anyway, this grease fitting bottoms out on the yoke right here so therefore it doesn't allow it to come out but this uh look it's getting a little chilly out here so if i'm stuttering my words here it doesn't allow this cap to come out this way enough for you to be able to lock your vice grips onto to squip to rotate it out now so what i did was i went and drove it out the other side like i should have to begin with and if you do that sometimes you get lucky you can take your finger and just twist it Ah, there it is. And... Crap. Well, that's going to show you the needle bearings, but guess what? The needle bearings stayed on the U-joint. If you look real close, you can see the needle bearings hanging out on it. I'll pull them out. Good thing I wasn't going to use this one, huh? If you look real close, see them little bearings? That's what's inside that cap that allows that U joint to flex and do everything it needs to do, but yet still um, hold everything in place. So, anyway, I got it out that size, and now what I got to do is I got to first fish all these needle bearings out because that kind of takes up a lot of room inside the U joint. And it doesn't allow because you got to take them flex this outward like this. You got to bring it out like this to be able to get it out. And with all those needle bearings stuck in here, it will not flex out for enough to do that. So I'm going to dig them out real quick and be right back with you. Alright, here's the deal. There is a little, that grease cap right there. It's all stuck up inside there. It don't want to come out. It's not allowing that thing to flex enough to bring the whole thing out. So what I'm going to do is now, I've got the socket back in place. I'm going to drive the U-joint back through the yoke and bring that cap, cap out the other side that will allow that U joint to flex up enough to bring it out. So, all right, like I said a, a moment ago, and it, that cap, I drove it out this way. And you notice right there's the grease joint that I mentioned mo a few moments ago. It comes down and hits the yoke right here. So first time you try to drive it out, don't go this way. You're not gonna get nowhere. Uh, it won't sell the way down right now because I've already pulled the U joint cross up some. And the needle bearings have fell down the side there, so it won't sell the way down for me to show you exactly what that does. But now that I've driven it down this way enough to give myself clearance, I pick the cross up this way. And sometimes you gotta get just right. There it is. Old U joints out. But now that what we do at this point. Take your extension, feed it all the way through like that. Smack it on through. All right, everybody, look at that. Old U joints out. Let me go get the new one. We'll start putting that one in. All right, everyone, here's the new U joint. 
I prefer, you know, just a, if you go to the auto parts store, and I got this from Advanced, Moog, they're really, really strong new joints. Now, there's another place, I'm not going to mention any names on that one. They've got a new joint for the Jeeps, it's like nine bucks for them or something like that. People, come on, don't be cheap. You pay for what you get. I did that the first time, and I had no pressure on that universal joint. I lost the dry shaft right now, Highway 65. The inside of the cap came apart and dumped the dry shaft. Which luckily, I hadn't totally lose it, but I dropped the tail, the tail shaft down of the dry shaft as I was running down the highway. Not a cool thing to happen, especially during a bad rush hour. Construction in that area, yeah, Metro Police were a little bit pissed at me. But all worked out well. All right, I'm going to show you guys something slowly work this cap off. The reason I say slowly, because remember those needle bearings in the old one? You want to make sure you don't unseat your needle bearings that's inside there. See those little bearings? <laughs> I have a few times knocked those bearings out of line and have to put each and single individual bearing back in place and make sure they are absolutely clean with no crud inside there because it will shorten the life of your usual dramatically if you get trash inside that. And also notice in this particular usual one, I showed you on the old one. Let me get the other old one. The grease fit in here. I'm not a very big fan of those because the cross sectional area of the usual one here, you've got a stress point right here. Flexing because this thing's got a rotational force on it all the time. So with a U joint having the grease fit in there, it creates a weak spot inside the cross right here. I'm not a fan of the U joints at all. But these particular moves, look, where that normally would have been, it's not there. Okay, where is it? Where is the uh, grease fit and go? Right there in the end of that cap. It doesn't hurt a thing. You don't lose any strength. It works out just fine. Uh, the grease fitting. Let's get some of that. That blade around somewhere, and I need to find it. But you'll see when I put it in. But anyway, just quick description of the universal joints and the difference between the ones you should look for for strength and the the trash crap things that you don't want. So let me get set up to put this baby in. Right back with you. All right, everyone. Here's, here we go. I showed you a moment ago where I pulled one of the caps off. We want to pull two of them off. And like I said, pull very slowly because it's kind of got a little bit of a suction. Do you see that step right here? This black seal here is sitting on that seal there. And be sure you pull them off nice and even. I mean, I pulled that one off kind of fast, but, but when I pulled it, the grease seal here is going to kind of hold the bearings in place. But as long as you don't, when you pull straight, don't cant or angle or anything like that when you pull it out. You risk pulling the bearings out of place. So basically, two caps off right now. Uh, get this over here for a moment. And what you want to do, you want your drive shaft positioned sort of like this. Then we're going to put one of your caps here. I wish I could do a better cam camera angle for you guys. Well, actually, I got ahead of myself. Sorry. Feed this through here, allow it to sit like that. Cap comes in from the bottom, and do so. You no, know, put your finger through here, feed that in like that. Take your cap, slide it back on, and be careful with it because you don't want to knock on bearings out of whack, like I keep saying. Now, you got in position like that. Now at this point, turn it around, hold that bearing in place, or hold your uh, cross in place. I'm sorry about the video quality, I'm doing the best I can to do this and give you guys the best quality I can with the camera. Anyway, hold it in place like that. And the reason you want to hold this, remember, I keep talking about them bearings, you don't want them out of whack. You hold this cross in place, it keeps those bearings um, keeps those bearings in place inside there. So as you're tapping this in, the bearings don't fall out. Put my foot on the drive shaft.
hired that one you see here that I've sorry I had to kill the camera that was just proving to be a pain in the tail trying to drive it through and camera right there and everything so I just did the best I could for you but I did enough for you to see the point I drove it through the caps on right there most of the time you don't have to drive it all the way through like like I have this side but you know I got carried away kept whack, whacking on it, and there you go so basically at this point now you want the cross to come up through the other side now I didn't clean the drive shaft I'm like I said like a mile on a trail or something you will end up getting junk around this the uh, trinion right here what you want to do is get your rag and wipe all that junk off. You don't want no dirt or anything inside that. So you wipe all that off good, clean it up. Then you want to put your other cap on. So let me wipe that off real quick and be right back with you. All right, after you get it all good wiped off and clean again, put you a little bit more dab of grease in it. The other cap. Remember your bearings, slow and easy. You set that down over top of that and just kind of love tap it back down in, get it down inside there and pay attention to your bottom cap so they don't pop off on you now don't get carried away just yet smacking the thing in place because what you got to do is you got to make sure you're guiding your bottom here your bottom cap you got to make sure you're guiding into the hole correctly so when you go to seat everything, you have everything centered up, aligned correctly, and you don't get the cap stress or stress your yoke and crack it or anything. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drive this into place, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Uh, you see that I don't have it driven all the way through yet, and there's a reason for that. Uh, I showed you a moment ago when I took out those uh, pins. Damn, we lost the screwdriver. There it is. There's that groove that I mentioned earlier. Let me get up here so you get a closer look. That's that groove that those snap rings set in right there. Make sure that groove's good and clean. Which this one is. I'm tapping the screwdriver off on the drive shaft, get clean junk off. But make sure that groove's good and clean. And this one's well clean enough. If it's not, I take your screwdriver blade, get inside there, scratch all the junk out. But this one right here is pretty clean, so I'm not gonna sweat it. Uh, then we take, you got, shoot, two different keys that the kit comes with. You got this one, see how it's got that open end right there, they're not too bad to deal with. I prefer these, because when you lock your pliers onto them, you get here, here, the pliers just tend to stay on better. Now you won't have to use all of them because the other side goes that goes into the front yoke of the differential. It has little tabs that keeps the keeps everything centered. So what you want to do is put the pliers on here, get inside that groove, and just set inside the groove. And take your pliers and squeeze around that ring, the snap ring, and make sure it's fully seated so that it doesn't come out on you. Now what we're going to do from the other side, flip the drive shaft again. We're going to complete driving that cap on down until it bumps and seats against the snap ring. So I'll be right back with you. All right, everyone, it's seated and ready to go. Now remember that one key I showed you, that one uh, snap ring I showed you just a moment ago. If you did like I just done here, see that's where the grease fitting screws into that hole right there. Now these. If I put that in place, I can't. Put, I cannot put my grease fitting in place. So that one I told you a moment ago, that's kind of difficult to hold on to sometimes. That's it. Because when you snap it in place, it gives clearance for that uh, grease fitting. Now, the alternative method would have been to for the grease fitting to be on the, one of the outside caps here. The grease fitting could have been out here, and I wouldn't have had to fool with this other ring altogether. But I mean, it's really not that difficult. What they included for the sake for people who like me wasn't paying attention which cap I was putting in. So therefore, here's what you do. Kind of get it in place, squeeze your pliers, and release it. Now what you want to do is that uh, universal the cap right there. You'll keep tapping, and they don't go in easy. If they go in easy, and sometimes you do. My, my rear drive shaft was not hard at all. 
and which kind of scares me. I like to get the tight interference fit because you know that U joint is not going to slide anywhere. So I'm actually going to look at replacing my rear drive shaft sometime soon. But um, you may have to, you know, you get in there that ring doesn't want to sit inside that groove. You may have to put your extension on here like this or socket, whatever it is you decide to use. Tap it a few more times. Keep seating it down against that other snap ring until you got it locked in place. Now, the grease fits inside this little bag. You do not, do not want to lose that. So you set that on here like this. Just a flat screwdriver. Screw that in place. Sorry, I keep blocking the light, but like I said, I'm working outside at the moment. I got so much power coat nub. I got two power coat nubs and mill and everything else in my garage. I can't even get my Jeep in there. So there we go. Good and tight. Now I can make this video excessively long and show you guys putting my drive shaft back in and all as such. Actually, I'm going to change the universal joint on the other end also. Think about it, people. If you break a U joint on one end, replace them both because I'm sure the other one probably isn't far behind. So, uh, U joint there's 25 ish or so. I think I paid for it. I don't remember off the top of my head. But you want to make sure you buy quality U joints. I mean, you really want to go through the pain in the ass thing about you cheap U joints and breaking on you. I can vouch for this because that one that left me stranded outside of 65 heading into Nashville. Uh, again, I can show you guys how to do the other end, but that would make the video even too much longer than it is now. Your dry shaft goes in the same way it came out. No magic science there. So, that's pretty much what I'm going to leave you guys hanging at. Uh, if you guys like my video, if you guys enjoy my videos, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And for those of you who have already subscribed, thanks. I really appreciate the support you guys give me. I, I really appreciate the thumbs up and the comments and the questions. I really appreciate that. It really makes me feel good. I'm out. I can... A little bit of my experience helping people. So, anyway, people, again, thanks for your thumbs up. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for subscribing. Y'all have yourself a great night. Peace out. See y'all. Ha ha. Y'all thought you got rid of me, didn't you? Now, actually, I thought of something right at the last moment when I was about to set the camera down. Imagine this, uh, and I will be doing the same thing for too long as soon as I can find me another drive shaft. I've only had this Jeep for a few months. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've only had this Jeep for a, uh, it's late, in the early summer or so. So I'm just kind of putting her back together because she was a pile when I got her. I'm going to give you some extra drive shafts. But, look at your loose cap. If you get that laying in the back side of your tub or whatever and you're out for wind, you want extra drive shafts in case you break something. That way you can do a quick uh, swap in the trail problem with that is these caps will fall off very easily so if you do happen to have extra drive shafts laying around inside your jeep or actually you want to strap them down you don't want them things bouncing around conking you upside the head especially if you're in an accident on the road i mean think about it. that's like a big steel tube it'll take your head off so to the real point these caps obviously they move you see me pull them off what you want to do is get you some electrical tape wrap electrical tape around all of this electrical tape stretches really really well several several layers around that that hold these caps in place to keep from coming off um, then if you want I mean just make sure you're secure so the electrical tape doesn't come undone if it gets wet or whatever when you're out playing in the creeks or you get caught out in the rain just make sure something's holding these caps on all the time stretch electrical tape and take you some uh, big hose clamp you know, rabbit coast clamp and go around all these caps right here and squeeze them down tight. I mean, just something to hold them on. Uh, anyway, that was about it. I thought of that right at the last moment. I just want to give you guys that pointer. So I want to change the other side real quick and put this girl back together. So again, I thank you guys for watching the videos. Uh, thank you guys for, you know, my thumb, the thumbs up that you give, the con uh, great comments that you leave. I really appreciate it. it shows I'm doing some good for some people. So anyway. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Peace, everybody. Y'all have a good night. See ya.